Hi, I'm Tara and welcome to Let's Do Books. You can email me at tara at thelesbianreview.com with any questions or comments or come join our Facebook group, The Lesbian Review Book Club. I'm excited today because I'm joined by Anna, one of the other kick-ass reviewers at The Lesbian Review. Welcome, Anna. Welcome. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Because it is morning when we're doing this, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it is. So anyone who follows our reviews of the Lesbian Review should know by now that you love a really good romance, and especially if it's a good sports romance. So do you want to just share with the listeners what we're going to be talking about today? Yeah, sure. We're actually going to focus on a specific sport in general. We're going to focus on tennis because January is actually the start of the Grand Slam season for tennis and everything. They got the Australian Open happening even though we're probably not going to air this for like a couple more weeks, just know the Australian Open happened right now. We don't know who won. Um, it's still the first week and everything, but I'm rooting for Serena and Roger Federer. That's just mine. But yeah, I mean, I love tennis on a whole because it's very much a, it's a, it's one of the few sports you get when you're, that you have to play on your own. It's like, yeah, you have the training, you have your coaches, you have your support system and everything, but once it's you on the court, it's just you. And it's you facing one other person one-on-one, or in some cases, doubles. But it's still the same situation where it's like you only have yourself or that other person to rely on. And in a way, you know, it's like, it's just the whole back and forth of following the ball and trying to make the right shot and knowing all these symmetries and everything like that. And it's really, it's kind of hypnotic to watch a little bit and people are like well it's kind of boring it's like not really I mean you see the ball do things that you know it's not supposed to do and then you watch these people you know they train so hard to be out there and you just see their bodies just move so fluidly along the court and it's just magic to me in a lot of ways plus I love the sound of a tennis ball when it hits the the court it's one of the greatest sounds I love in my in the world and everything I can't duplicate it I've tried but you know I do love that sound more than anything So we each have one tennis romance that we love, and then we have one that we're going to finish this episode with that we both love. Yes. So I guess uh, if you're listening, just be prepared. There's going to be some hardcore fangirling coming up. Yeah, we can't we can't be held responsible for any squealing or anything that any <laughs> shouting that might actually come up because we're like, oh yeah, totally, you know, and everything like that. It's kind of like what we do when we do our joint reviews on things we like. Uh, she'll say something and I'm like, yes, totally, and I try to explain <laughs> it as you know best I can. But usually she does good and vice versa. So yeah, I know I get it back and then I'm I, I'm equally excited. And all right, anyway, let's get started. What is the book? What's your recommendation? My recommendation is fairly recent. It's a Code of Conduct by Cheyenne Blue, and I really liked this story because a it takes place in tennis, obviously, but also it definitely uh, looks at that forbidden romance because it's basically a romance between a player, Genevieve Jones, who goes by Viva. And basically a lineswoman who's an official in the world of tennis, Gabriella Mendaro. Both of these women do not get off on the right foot, which is obviously seen in the, pro- in the prologue because Viva believes that Gabriella called bad foot faults on her. And, you know, it's a year later and they end up me- having a chance meeting and everything. And Viva's starting to actually become attracted to her. But there's still that whole officials and players can't, really mix and mingle not just have no romance involved but they can't mingle at all they can't be friends they can't you know hang out together after a match so it was really interesting to read about you know how do they get around this you know how are they able to be together and also be in the sport they love and there's a lot of actually really good conversations with Genevieve and her friends about you know is it possible or is there just going to always be this stigma of being like, well, she's a player and, or she's a, an official, this can never happen, you know? So it was very interesting. And honestly, I kind of looked at it as more of a, um, while it is set in a sports environment, it's feels more like a workplace romance. Like when you have that boss employee type relationship that most people say is forbidden, like no office romances and stuff like that. It's kind of the same day because the tennis court is just their office. And so they Mm -hmm. really just, they understand that there are rules, but at the same time, the heart wants what the heart wants. Do you want to share the the blur for this one? Yeah, I'll share the blur. People don't know much about it. Yeah. 
Do you want me to share the one that I wrote or the one that... Let's do yours. You're a good blurb writer. Okay. So here's what the little blurb that I wrote for it. Genevieve Viva Jones was a great tennis player in her prime. She even has a Grand Slam win to her name. Then an overzealous lines woman, Gabriela Mendaro, takes away her opportunity to have back-to-back wins at the U.S. Open. After that tournament, a persistent injury flares up, and Viva knows that her time is in tennis is coming to an end. But Viva doesn't want to give up without a fight, and she chooses to leave the game on her terms. On her journey back to competition, Viva has a chance meeting with Gabriella on the side of the road. And while she still harbors animosity against her for costing her the U.S. Open, she has to admit there is a sexiness to Gabriella that she hasn't seen before. As the two women spend more time together, a romance, of course, eventually blossoms. There's just one problem. Players and officials are not allowed to date. Even though Viva is on their verge of retirement, Gabriella's career as as an official is taking off. And any kind of fraternization between the two would be considered improper and could cost Gabriella all she has worked hard to achieve. Tough choices and sacrifices will have to be made, but at what cost? Will Viva and Gabriella be able to have their romance and stay in the sport they love? Or will the code of conduct scratch any possibilities the two women could have of being together? That just sounds so good. I know, I it is good. Yet. You need to read it. Uh, you totally need uh, to read this. See, you're, I was right. You are an awesome blurb writer because that just makes me want to read it right now. It's on my Kindle. I just haven't gotten to it yet. You know, our lists, are, our review lists are mighty and I tend oh, to yeah. really focus yeah. on what I'm reviewing. But it just sounds delicious. Like almost like a, it sounds like it has like a little bit of enemies to lovers going on. Right. It has a little bit of everything. It has the enemies to lovers. It has that forbidden romance. Um, it has workplace romance. I even put that in there because... Most people are just like, well, I don't understand sports very much. And while, you know, they do highlight some of the matches, they don't really get it so... She doesn't really put as much detail in there that you get lost in the matches, I guess is the way to put that. But yeah, I really enjoyed Cheyenne's writing. I thought she did. She tackled this really well. And I know part of that is because, you know, she is Australian. So she was able to get a lot of those minute details and what I really loved is that she was able to dive into like the personal background especially with Viva because usually you just get you know the athlete and them on the circuit and everything but it showed her with her family it showed her you know really enjoying and chipping in and doing what she needed to do as a sister as a daughter and everything and I think that made her more relatable even though she seemed kind of cold because of the issue with Gabriella in the beginning it made her more human and Mm -hmm. compassionate to be towards and everything so i was happy about that as well all right well that sounds amazing i'm definitely gonna read it Mm -hmm. (laughs) so my recommendation is one that is not new i think it's it came out sometime in the last five years anyway and it's lucky loser by yolanda wallace i'm gonna start with a blurb on this one Sinjin Smythe has learned the hard way that falling for fellow tennis players isn't a very good idea. While recovering from a procedure on her knee, she also learns that Laura Fortescue, her former doubles partner, is one of her truest friends. Sinjin's other fellow tennis players may have called or sent emails, but Laura is the only one who showed up to see her. Sinjin has to work hard to get to Wimbledon from her position well below 100, but she makes it along with Laura, who is fresh off of winning the French Open. As they spend time together every day of the tournament, each begins to wonder if maybe the right way to start a lasting relationship is with their best friend. I just really, really enjoyed this one. Mm-hmm. Sinjin, Sinjin is a little prickly because, you know, she's had her ego hit quite hard by having to, like, you know, her position has dropped so low and she had that injury and had to go through getting better and... And the woman she was seeing at the time just didn't want to have anything to do with her when that happened. So that, that's definitely an ego blow right there. Yeah. And that woman was awful. Oh, yeah. She was awful. She was really awful. But then Lore is so wonderful. And I love, I really love the friends to lovers aspect of this because it really shows like they were pretty friendly before, but you really see their friendship become Mm-hmm. quite strong yeah and so it's it's not that like 
oh, you've been my best friend for years and years and I'm falling for you kind of friends to lovers. It's more like we don't see the friendship develop from the very beginning, but we see like that really strong friendship development before right. anything romantic happens. And the thing I like with that is that it means that I really believe in in the happily ever after that comes. Yeah, and I think uh, Wallace did a good job too of I, I know I remember I wrote this I read this book like a couple of years ago and I remember there's a distinct scene where Sinjin is going to Lore and she's like, Okay, I finally see you as, you know, as a possible partner and everything, but Laura's just like, We need is like I'm I'm happy, I want this, but we need to wait. We need to wait mm-hmm. till after Wimbledon because you're you're on this tear right now and the last thing I want to do is do anything to basically shift your focus to anything other than winning right now. So Yeah. I, yeah. That just, just shows just how competitive as well as respectful lore is of the game along with Sinjin's career and everything because they pretty much knew this was her last run. Mm-hmm. And so it just it just made it all the more... I think it made her more attractive to Sinjin to know that, yes, this woman does love me, but she's willing to let me have this one last little hurrah before. Yeah, I thought it just showed so much integrity on her part, too. As a friend and as a colleague, and I enjoyed seeing that dimension of her as well. Mm -hmm. And I love that at the end, they both get their happy ending, and they... I do remember reading this, and I was like, I can usually follow the game of tennis pretty well. But there there were points where I, I felt like I was, the, the game was kind of overtaking it, like certain matches that she was doing. It's like the detail just got a little too much for me. And it was just hard for me to follow a little bit. Yeah, I had to... I mean, I don't follow any sport. So I, I did find those scenes kind of difficult to follow. And I actually found it a little bit difficult to review because I didn't know some of the terminology. So I had to like phone right. a friend who does follow tennis. Yeah. Like, and run. What does this mean? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Am I using the right words to describe the thing? So yeah. I guess if you're not big into sports or even if you are, just be warned that some of the detail might be a little much to follow, but you'll still be able to fo- like, you're still going to be able to follow the relationship development. That's not going right. to be a problem. The romance is still wonderful. Mm-hmm. You just might find those scenes a little much, and but you can skim through those if you need to. Yeah, and, and that, that was something I actually discussed with Rachel a while ago was the fact that you, you always have, there's a there's a definitely a balancing act when writing about sports. It's like you want to give enough detail that people understand this sport is important to the story, but you don't want to give so much that they get lost in the weeds being like, okay, what am I, what's going on? Mm-hmm. You're listening to The Lesbian Talk Show. TheLesbianTalkShow.com, your hub of podcast information. Speaking of Rachel, our third book, which we both recommend, yes. is Love All by Rachel Spangler. So I'm going to read the blurb that we co-wrote for our joint review where we both fangirled our pants off. Oh yeah, we totally fangirled. I think she got a kick out of that too. <laughs> Good. Professional tennis player Jay Pierce has had a long career in tennis, but early on she was burned by someone she cared about, causing the world of tennis to turn their backs on her. She has spent years climbing her way back into the good graces of the tennis gods. Now that she's on the cusp of a big comeback, she doesn't want to chance a repeat catastrophe and decides to go it alone. Sadie Larson knew nothing of professional tennis until her daughter Destiny broke onto the women's tour at the age of 17. She was able to master being a single parent on her own, and she knows she can do the same to help Destiny become the best tennis player in the world. All she has to do is stay laser-focused on protecting her family, too. Jay and Sadie believe they're prepared to face every single challenge with the stony resolve of a woman who has been counted out her entire life. The only thing neither woman has counted on was each other. Can they survive the crushing crucible of competition, press pressure, and parenting? Or will love all really mean no one goes home a winner? Ooh, baby. <laughs> this book. I know, right? I know. Oh, my God. It's like, it, it had everything. It had the dramatic tension that we come to expect. It had the sexual tension that we come to expect. And mm-hmm. it had good, bad, everything. It had wit and charm. I mean, 
the th- the excerpt that I put in the review was the one where she goes, Sadie goes and talks to Jay, trying to talk her into doing doubles. And the first words out of Jay's mouth are like, I don't do doubles. It's like, okay, thank you. Bye. You know, but she slowly <laughs> turns it around and yeah. gets to talk her into it, which I think is amazing on that. But yeah, that, that whole book is just great. And you get the matches. Like, like I said, you, she, she doesn't over, she, overdo it on the detail of what's happening she gives us just mm-hmm. enough to show us okay this is this is their routine this is what they go through even off the court she's like you know they go here they do this they do that and everything but she doesn't do it so much that we feel like we're being bogged down with all the tedious things it's like everything she's showing us is important to the next thing that's about to come so i found that very intriguing and i i love that that made that book flow so much easier yeah i totally agree and of course i was totally rooting for jay and sadie the entire time <laughs> i was just like come uh, on you know <laughs> and okay i know this not everybody likes De- De- destiny um Mm-mm. but uh, and, i'm not a fan <laughs> no and and that was definitely by design mm-hmm. and everything i mean she's 17 i mean most 17 year olds aren't thinking about going pro in tennis or anything like that. They're just trying to live their life, figure out adulthood as they're getting there and everything. Yeah. So I, I can understand a lot of the stress that say, that Destiny is under and that can come out in other ways, especially when she's been like, it's been her and her mom pretty much her entire life. And so to want to protect that as much as possible from somebody you, you don't really know, but you've only heard rumor about, I can understand her being very prickly when it comes to Jay in a lot of ways. But as we find out more about Jay, you realize that Destiny's um, opinion of her is very skewed by rumor and gossip, not based in fact. I got to say, I was I was also surprised by Destiny's dad mm-hmm. being very... He wasn't a main character in there, but he was there enough to just really show Destiny, especially towards the end, that, hey, you know... Everybody loves in different ways, and they show it in different ways. And Jay was doing that in a lot of ways. I'm not going to spoil it for anybody. You got to watch it. You got to read it, and everything. But to he have somebody so... be that voice of reason, yes, exactly. Yeah, he was just so lovely. Mm-hmm. Like we don't, we don't get to see that many dudes in lesbic. I mean, right. understandably, these are books written by women. And usually when we do, women. they're not really the nicest guys in the world either. I mean, exactly. So the fact that, you know, she, I mean, even, I think even at one point Jay says, she's like, if I was straight, I would totally want to go for this guy. <laughs> you know, he's so nice. He's sweet. He's good looking, you know, what's not to like about him, you know, yeah. and everything. So it was a very nice change of pace to see, this loving, caring other parent who wasn't there a lot in Mm -hmm. Destiny's life show up and really just kind of be the voice of reason in a lot of situations, even though he was like, I'm not here a lot of the time, but that doesn't mean I don't know what's going on. Yeah. And I also loved Jay's character arc. Mm -hmm. I felt like it was so strong. When I started reading it, I kind of expected that she might be an ice queen because the last like several of Rachel's books featured ice queens. And I think she's writing some of the best ice queens of oh, Lesbic yeah. at mm-hmm. the moment. She's so freaking good, but she wasn't instead. Jay finds other ways to keep people at arm's length. She doesn't do it through like she's guarded, but she doesn't do it by being prickly or, you know, being acerbic or being cruel she does it with humor and deflection and so that people looking at her from the outside might think she doesn't take things seriously but actually takes she takes things incredibly seriously and so for her to open up is a huge deal yeah exactly i mean that that was the best thing i loved about the developing relationship with sadie was that you see this girl who's very much a smart ass and everything and then it's it's usually one of the two things. It's like you either become really cold, really inverted into yourself when something bad happens to you, or you just hide it, you know. Mm-hmm. And for Jay, I mean, everybody in the tennis world knows her attitude, so she knew she had to do something to kind of keep it, 
you know, show that everything's on the up and up, even after, you know, this major scandal happened in her life, it's like she had to show that it doesn't bother her when it really did, you know, because if she shows you bother her, then the press and everybody's going to just start Mm -hmm. taking chunks out of you and it's just going to demoralize you. And she knew to get back on that circuit, to get back into playing and to get back to winning, she had to show it's nothing. I almost kind of wanted her to run into her ex at one point, just to, to, <laughs> but I, I understand that not happening is like, I think that would have, with all the drama that was going on with Destiny and Sadie and everything, that might have just been one little thing too far, but at the same time, it's like, you know, that would have been interesting to see, especially with Sadie, you know, knowing the truth yes. and everything, so, because I could totally see Sadie standing up to her for her. Oh, I totally agree. Oh, yeah. Well... That is all for this episode. Thank you so much, Anna, for joining me so we can talk about these awesome books. I'm glad to be here. This is one of my favorite sports, so I have no problem doing this again, maybe when we get closer to the French Open, which I believe is in May and stuff. So we'll see. Hey, maybe we'll have another book by then, too, by somebody being (laughs) like, hey, here's one for the French, you know. (laughs) I'm Tara, and you've been listening to Let's Do Books. Remember to email me at Tara at the lesbianreview.com with your questions or comments. If you're an author who wants to come on the show, talk about how you discovered lesfic or some of the books that you love, please reach out and just send me an email. If you've enjoyed this episode, please check out our show notes where you'll find a Patreon link for the Lesbian Talk Show or visit patreon.com slash the lesbian talk show. Our patrons get exclusive content that no one else does, like bonus audio from other shows, author interviews, all kinds of interesting things. Don't forget to join our Facebook group, The Lesbian Review Book Club, so you can also talk to us about these books or anything else that you're reading and loving. You can find me and all the other podcasters on The Lesbian Talk Show channel at our Facebook group, The Lesbian Talk Show chat group. To find this and many other great shows, all you need to do is search for The Lesbian Talk Show on iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher, or Spotify. 